Hello and welcome to episode 45 of Berry Fun Adventures. My name is Tanya and I am coming to you today from a snowy Minnesota. Finally, we have some snow. And uh, in Minnesota here where my family and I run Firefly Berries, which is a fruit farm that specializes in strawberries, Concord grapes, and naturally dyed yarn. So thank you so much for coming back if you are a returning viewer and thank you for coming to check out the channel if you are new here. Welcome. So yeah, like I said, it is finally snowing. We have had a very weird winter here in Minnesota. And I say weird, you know, I know this is not a weather podcast, but there is something going on with the rhythms of the season here in Minnesota this year because it is a mess. We were like, no snow, like warm, and it wasn't until, so today is uh, Tuesday, March 26th, I should say. So normally this is like when we, we do get like a spring storm every once in a while, but it's usually when we start to warm up. And now we've gotten a couple inches of snow over the last couple of days, we're supposed to get a little more today. So I'm just glad that we are getting precipitation of some sort, being that we are a farm, we do grow things and living things need water and it's been extremely dry here so that is one bit of good news to share but it has been probably about a month since i recorded last life has gotten kind of crazy in the last month uh, i always have great intentions of coming to you every two weeks but you know life happens and sometimes i just don't that just doesn't work but my husband had to travel to india for work for his day job for two weeks at the beginning of March. Um, so this, this is going to be the fast and quick life update for you. If you're not interested in this, go ahead and move on. I'll put this time timestamps below. But those of you who have been around for a while may be wondering where I've been. But so my husband was gone for two weeks. At the very first day that he left, I I like to call it a sports injury. I was doing laundry and I ran into the corner of our wooden bed frame really hard. And I thought I had broken a bone in my lower leg by my shin as it hurt so bad I couldn't put weight on it. I had to go in. I got x-rays. Luckily, I did not break it, but I had a lot of swelling. And so I had to be on crutches for a little bit. That was at the very beginning of his trip away. Um, and then, you know, life is just busy when you're one parent. And I had to... Uh, my my third child. So I have four children for those of you who are new here. And uh, my third son, who is 16, is a big dancer. And he had a performance the first weekend my husband was gone. And his two older brothers wanted to come back from college to see it. So I did the little triangle trip to pick them up from college on my own. That's about four and a half hours. And then he had his performance and I volunteered and then I had to bring them back. And then, unfortunately, my uncle passed away. I had to drive um, five hours, five and a half hours, one way to Wisconsin to, to say goodbye to him and all that jazz. So it has just been a lot in the last couple of weeks and last month. And so that's why I haven't come to you. I just haven't been in the right mental state to record a, a podcast. But ironically... With the forecast of snow this past week, so like a week ago, we started to get these forecasts that we might get some snow, some big snow. I kind of got excited and it, it motivated me to get things done and to do things that I had been putting off for a while. And one of them is a new pattern that has just come out for me for Very Fun Yarns, the Snow Plow Cowl. And I'm going to share more about that here in a second. Um, but also, I have gotten a fair bit of making done, actually a lot of crochet. I will show you that in the works in progress section. Um, I did finish a few little small projects, so I have a few finished objects for you as well. But before I get into all that, normally I do that first and I do the yarn update last. I'm going to switch it around today because, like I said, I have a new pattern out. It is the snow plow cowl, and it is a simple... I have the first one I made here, the sample. It is a simple infinity cowl, double wrap infinity cowl, where you hold a fingering weight uh, Surrey alpaca with a fingering weight 
I used like a sack yarn, an 80-20 sack yarn, but you could use any fingering weight. And if you are not a fan of a fluffy yarn like Surrey Alpaca, you could use just two fingering strands of your choice. Um, I will say I, what I love about it is the fluffiness and the softness of the Surrey, but it would be just as nice and warm and cozy and easy to knit if it were just in fingering weight sock yarn scraps or even if you have as like a special skein of like cashmere or something that wouldn't be great on your feet but you want it close to your neck um, close to your skin that'd be perfect for this project but like I said it is a you cast on provisionally I'm going to show you I have one when I get to work some progress if you stick around that long I do have a pink one on the needles but um, you cast on provisionally and there's a little link to a tutorial for you in the pattern so there's several links to things uh, videos to help you not my personal videos but other videos that I really appreciate by other makers who put them out um, so there will be that in there and then you just knit in a tube until you get to the particular length and then you will graft it together with a kitchener stitch um, but then throughout it the fun bit is playing with the color so you can see here there's a main color held with the surrey so the surrey is held through the entire entire cowl but um, then there's a main color that you use and in between the main color sections you have these mini skein colors so this particular one I used hand spun. So if you are a spinner, um, this is a great way to use up hand spun as well. Um, the little sections are each take about seven grams of fingering weight yarn. So if you have um, a mini skein set, that's another great way to use that up. You can, uh, you know, make it all different shades of maybe like a pink or a purple or whatever it is that you like for your favorite color. So that is now out on Ravelry. It's available there as a $3 pattern download. And it is also available, if you don't use Ravelry, on my website, uh, fire, our farm site, fireflyberries.com slash shop to get to the shop link. And then there's a pattern section where you can find that. Um, and then I also have in the shop right now, I have some kits. So if you do not have your own uh, Surrey and you want me to do the work of matching it for you. I have done that. So I have a couple different colors. I'm just going to show you real quick. They are in their package. So they come like this. You'll get a printed uh, pattern of the printed copy of the pattern. Now, if you do purchase this, a kit from me, and you would like also a digital download, please let me know in the notes section, and I'd be happy to gift you the digital download in Ravelry or to send it to you by email as a PDF file so that you can have it. So that is totally fine. Just let me know. But this is the green one. You get the green Surrey that's held throughout. You have this uh, mermaid blue and green as the main color. And then you have a solid or more like a tonal darker green swamp moss and then the mama's boys to go with it. That is the green one. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I took, I have to pause for a second. I took two greens. Let me go run and get a blue one. I'll be right back okay i'm back and so then the blue one you have the mama's boys this is hard to show you i'm gonna turn it this way the mama's boys surrey um with this is i it's kind of a one of a kind i have made notes so that i can repeat it but it's a very light blue raspberry so <clears throat> i had some wonderful test knitters who helped me with not only testing the pattern but also testing out some of my color combinations in the kit and one thing to note is that this fingering weight Surrey really mutes the colors that you see here. So, um, for instance, the green one, originally I had this dark green being held double with the Surrey as the main color. And I thought it was beautiful, but I also thought that it would be nice if, we, if you put in a lighter main color, it lightens up the green so it's not quite so dark. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a lighter feel and then using the darker colors for the accent. So that's what I've done here. And so you have the, the lighter colors as the main and then you have lost in your eyes 
and Tainted Love, which were two new colors that came out around Valentine's Day. And those are the contrast colors. And then we have a pink version, which is the one that I am making. I'll show you in a little bit here. Um, and this one is the Tiny But Tough main colors. These two are the same. It just takes the dye differently on the Surrey versus the um, 80-20. And then I have a Dark Cranberry and a Love You to the Moon and Back for accents. And those are turning out really nice in my sample that I am making for myself. And then the last one is the purple one, which actually turned out quite nice too. This is the same as I, one of my test knitters made, and it is Blackberry with the Blackberry Surrey. And then we have a Love Shack. And this is a new colorway. It doesn't have a name yet. I um, will probably be dyeing some more on different bases coming up. But so those are those two. So yeah, so if you're interested in a kit, you can get that now online on my shop at fireflyberries.com. Um, or the patterns, and then, um, yeah, also going on in the shop right now, um, there is another kit, and that is, I talked about this, but I have been slow to get it into the shop, and that is the So Sweet um, Wrap and Lap Blanket, and this was a part of the 2023 Very Fun Yards Advent Countdown, and so this is the 10 gram set of that, so you can see all of the minis. You get 25 of the 10 gram minis along with a um, 50 gram main color skein. And that is enough to make the wrap that is pictured here. That is my other pattern that has been out. Also available on Ravelry or my website. Um, so yeah, so you can, if you did not get a kit and you wanna make this exact pattern with these minis, you can get that in the shop right now. I have a few kits in there. I may have a few more going in, but I know for sure there's a few right now. Um, or, you know, you can save the pattern for later and you can just get it if you want a bunch of 10 gram minis. So uh, that is in there for you. And then the last thing about Berry Fun Yarns right now is that I'm having a spring cleaning sale. So basically this time of the year, I'm gearing up with lots of new colors, lots of new things because if you remember, if you've been around or maybe you haven't, um, being that I am a farm, I'm a very seasonal. So I set up at the Rochester Farmer's Market here in Southeast Minnesota. I set up um, at the market stand every Saturday from May through October, within reason, sometimes I'm not there, but uh, so I'm at this point starting to make more new colors for the season ahead but also I want to make room on my shelves for those new colors. So in order to clear out some of my inventory, we are having a sale. So all full skeins that are in stock in the shop are marked down to 18 to $22, depending on the base. And that sale will be running through midnight on March 29th. So if you are watching this um, soon after it comes out, you should be able to get in on that sale. So yeah, so that is the updates for Berry Fun Yarn. Lots of new and exciting things coming. Um, I do want to say one quick note about Advents for next year. Um, the past three years I have done a countdown kit of sorts for the Advent season. I know they're very popular through um, Indie Dyers and I just want to say that I am not planning. So for those of you who are seeing things come out right now with pre-orders, I'm not planning on doing a 24 mini skein countdown. So right now I am leaning towards doing four, like a four week, like a weekly countdown where each week you'll get a goodie package um, that'll be wrapped up. That'll be a full skein, um, likely a fingering weight. I'm not sure if I'll offer it in a different weight or not, but uh, probably a full skein. And then I'm, I'm thinking of combining it with some of my farm things, like maybe including also like a little jar of jam. So a little goodie box that will be able to be opened weekly, but not the mini skein setup that I have done the past few years. Just trying to change it up a little bit this year, trying to figure out, um, you know, kind of what works best for me as far as time management and um, how much I can put out. So keep that in mind. Um, I will be doing pre-orders for that later this spring, probably May, June time just so I can kind of get a feel of how many I need to make. But if you are interested in that, it is coming just in a different form than it was last year. 
Okay, I think that's it. I rambled on enough about all of the updates for Berry Fun Yarns and what's been happening in my life. So let's get on to the making. So since I came to you last, I did finish a couple things. One of them I'm actually wearing right now, and they probably don't look the best because I've been wearing them, and that is my cloud slippers. So I finished this pair of cloud slippers. Um, cloud slippers is a pattern that is free. I believe it's by Adrian Sullivan, and it is on Ravelry. I have made at least a dozen pair of these slippers before, and I tend to make them out of wool ease thick and quick yarn, which is what I made this pair out of. And I will say that if you wear them a lot and you knit them only out of woolies that they do get holes and i don't want to say i would say with regular average wear you probably would last one winter season for us in minnesota that would be like six months which is a pretty long time if you wear them daily um, but they are not as hard wearing because the wool of woolies is not doesn't have nylon in it I don't believe I mean it's got some acrylic in it but it's it's um plied in a very loose way so I feel like it doesn't doesn't wear as well as something so if you have something that's plied a bit tighter higher twist on it but it's thick um, that would work well for these slippers however what I tend to do and I don't know you probably can see it on this one most is that I tend to hold, you see the little purple strand going through there? I hold a strand of fingering weight sock yarn, 80-20, double with my woolies, and that tends to give it a little bit more strength. And then I also, um, I, I knit these on a US 13. I think that's what the pattern recommended. I cannot remember exactly, but I will link my pattern page which will take you to the actual pattern on Ravelry below, and you can check that out. But they are so cozy, they're so warm. I can knit um, one of the one foot, so one half of the pair in 30 minutes. So I can knit a full pair in an hour. And they are knit flat, and then you seam them. But they're so easy to make. And so the way I see it is, if it only takes me an hour and they last four to six months, I'm still going to keep using the woolies because it's just such a nice thickness for the pattern. So yeah, so I finished a pair of those. And then I had finished, last time I came to you, I think I finished a pair of cloud slippers in this color for my son. And so I had a little bit of yarn left over. Oh, I had a little bit of yarn left over. And that's the thing with the cloud slippers. You can get, I make the size two. I have kind of large feet. I have a size 11 in women's. And so I make the size two. If you have average size women's feet, I would say the size one would be plenty big because they do stretch a little bit as they, as you wear them. For me, I can get three slippers out of one skein of yarn. There's a cat scratching at my door. Hopefully he won't won't get louder he'll get quieter anyway I can make three slippers out of one pair um, so after I make a full pair I have like a third of the skein left and I could save it but I'm kind of in a place right now where I don't want to save yarn like that I'd rather just finish it all and then when I need another pair get a new skein of yarn so what I did is I made three little charity hats um, and each one is sort of my own pattern I mean I looked up a little bit some um, free patterns just to get stitch count basically but um, so this one is sort of the basis of it and I think it took about 50 grams of yarn of the woolies and it's very simple I cast on this is in my project page 36 stitches I knit one purl one for four rounds and then I knit straight stockinette until I got to six inches from the brim and then I did a couple rounds of decreases and pulled the end through the top to close it up at the top and I think this is probably like a toddler size baby slash toddler size is sort of what I was going for some of this this one is definitely baby because it's a little shorter 
So I was running out of pink yarn on this one. So I made this one first. And then I did a little weighing of yarn and decided I could, I didn't quite have enough for a second pink one. So I made a, uh, used the rust color. I think it's called spice for the brim. Um, and then I did the rest, but I was running out of yarn at the top. So it is a tad bit shorter than uh, planned. And I think I did only cast on 34 stitches for this one. Um, but the good thing is they are donation. They're for charity. I decided I was going to start a little charity donation box. Or I suppose if somebody I know has a baby, I could give it as a gift. But I was going to start a little box of things like this. And then next year, as it gets closer to winter again, I will send them into um, my charity. So uh, sometimes I give them to a local charity here in our town. But I also really love supporting, um, it's called... For the children of Pine Ridge, I think. And it's sent out to South Dakota to the Pine Ridge Reservation where they have a lot of needs for um, warm winter things like this. So I will link that charity below. They do have a group on Ravelry and they're very active and they have lots of different projects and things going on. So if ever you, you know, want to make something or you made something and it's not, hasn't found its right home yet, they do accept a lot of different things. So three of those hats done. Okay, that is it for my finished objects today. So moving on to works in progress. I will say that I have spent a lot of time since I came to you last actually crocheting on my granny square blanket. Now, last time I came to you, I think I had about 20-ish squares left to do out of my 96 squares. So this, let me show you, got kind of a mess happening here. Um, this is a pile of my squares here, but the squares themselves are about this big. They're eight rounds and I knit them or knit them, crocheted them in fingering weight sock yarn. I made 96, so my blanket is going to be 8 across and 12 down. So not only did I finish the last 20-ish squares, I started to sew it together or crochet it together. So I am using a crochet-as-you-go um, method, and I do have a link for that in my pattern page to a tutorial that I am using. But look, so I am using, first of all, I should tell you, I'm using Hawthorne Kettle, Kettle Dyed in the Slate colorway from Knit Picks as my cast uh, sewing together, crocheting together yarn because I just really liked the gray color. And as a dyer, a natural dyer, it's kind of hard for me to get this gray color consistently. So I just decided to buy it. Let me put this down to show you how far I have come. Look at this. So I have gotten, I am crocheting them together the long direction. So the rows are long and I have five rows on, but you'll see what kind of happens towards the end here is you, you crochet them on going this way. So you add them in going this way and then you go back through and you go around and then you then you crochet the whole row together when you go back down the second time. So that's what I'm doing on row five right now, but I have gotten a lot done and this is going to be a fabulously warm, cozy blanket. I will say in the future, if I do granny squares again, I will probably do them fingering held double or worsted weight. Because um, I do like the fingering weight blankets. I mean, they're nice, but I prefer, I tend to use the warmer blankets more. Just because I tend to get colder and we live in Minnesota, which in most years really is cold and you like the warm, the thicker blankets. I don't know about any of you, but I also, I kind of like a heavy blanket. I don't have a weighted blanket, but I tend to like my blankets that are heavier. They just, I don't know, they feel cozier to me. But I am using a C crochet hook, 2.75 millimeters. And this is the Clover Amour hook, which I really love. 
that set. I own that whole set. So, yeah, that is my granny striped blanket still living in its basket. And I hopefully will have this done by the time I come to you next. And I can show you that as a finished object. All right, so, oh, I was going to show you. Let's do that next. My snowplow cowl that I mentioned in the beginning, I am doing the pink kit that I showed you that is um, in the Fairy, Very Fun Yarns online shop. And I'm actually quite far. I, I don't have too much more left to go. So, doo -doo -doo, it's kind of a mess, though. I got all my yarn tangled up. Look how far I am. So this is, let's see if I can get, oh, there we go. That's pretty accurate. So this is the um, I'll Love You to the Moon and Back. Now it's blowing out again. And this is the Cranberry, how it knits up with Held Double. And then the Tiny But Tough in the middle. Tiny But Tough is kind of like a ballet pink, but it has a peach kind of undertone to it. I dye that with something. It's a bark, and it's called Red Quebracho. Um, it's actually, oops, I'm losing needles, stitches here. It's actually very hard to find. You can find Quebracho fairly easily, but that gives you more of a yellow-orange color. This red Quebracho is just beautiful. In fact, the supplier where I had gotten it from said she wasn't able to get it anymore. So I do still have a fair bit in my dye stuff stash, but eventually I won't be able to make this pretty color anymore, which I really love. So yeah, so this is mine. Now in the pattern, you actually have um, nine, sec nine mini skein sections or contrast sections. And this is, here's a funny story about gauge and, gauge and how it can change. So this pattern, I actually started to knit and create the weekend after I had my wisdom teeth out in December. So if you've been following me for a little while, you'll remember I had my wisdom teeth taken out in the middle of December, and I knit this cowl during that time, my recovery time. This one I am knitting on the exact same needle, following the exact same pattern, and my gauge is much looser. So I realized that the other day because I was like, hmm, I don't know, I might be running out of yarn. And I will say, if you do do the snow cowl pattern, you do really need a full skein of Surrey alpaca yarn or whatever your main skein is, because you do really use it all um, down to the last little bit. And I tried to, I did tweak the pattern a tad bit because a couple of my testers ran out of Surrey. So I did tweak it to make it better, but gauge is not important in this pattern in the sense of size or fit but it is important in the sense of running out of yarn so if you do choose to make the pattern just kind of be alert to that and watch your gauge so anyway i realized that my row gauge was so different on this that um, i tell you in the pattern how many inches to knit to before you should have before you graft it and i'm going to be there after eight sections of each instead of nine sections so that's fine, not a big deal. But if you have a similar thing with your gauge and you're knitting a pattern like my pattern here or something similar to it, you know, don't freak out and think you necessarily have to, to rip it all out again because that can be a pain. If you like how it looks, you know, just kind of be aware. The nice thing about this pattern is that there are sections, right? There's, there's like a a main section, a contrast section, a main, and so all the main sections are the same and all the contrast sections are the same in the sense of how much yarn you should use as you do it. So very easy, you know, if you don't want to make a gauge swatch when you're making this pattern, you could simply have your little scale, do the first, weigh your yarn to start, make a note, do the first section, weigh your yarns again, make a note so that you know how many grams of each you are using for each section and then you can figure out if you're going to run out so you don't have to play yarn chicken at the end so that's a pro tip for you weigh your yarn as you go and um, if you need to make changes you know like maybe you need to do one or two less rows or you need to do more rows or whatever or maybe you want to 
take the stitch count down by a couple so it's not quite so wide around so that you have more length. You know, you shouldn't have to do that if you follow the gauge of the pattern exactly as it is. But if you are not getting gauge, but you like the look of it, just weigh your yarn and that will help you so you don't run out of yarn at the end. So anyway, all that to say, it is coming along swimmingly. And I actually wasn't very motivated to work on this for a very long time until we got the forecast late last week about getting snow. And then I was like, mm, yeah, I should work on that. And it goes very fast when I do work on it. Fancy that, huh? It goes fast when you actually work on your project. But yeah, hope to have that finished by next time as well. Okay, so then I think the next, the last three, so those are two I've shown you. My last three works in prog progress are all new cast on since I came to you last. And the first one is a Louisiana sweater. Now, if you've been around, you know I've made this before. I'm wearing one right now. Louisiana sweater is by Petite Knit. It is a simple pattern. Now you can make this um, neckline here. You can make it longer if you want. You can make it shorter. Um, it is a, I believe, super bulky yarn. I choose to hold two strands of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted together. And that gives me a good, a good gauge for the pattern. So I knitted on this one I made quite a while ago. But the reason I'm making another one is because I made one for my husband. I'll put a picture of him in here. Um, in February, I finished it. And he, when he went away, as one does, I was cold. And my sweaters, oh, I didn't tell you, I had a moth incident in my sweater drawer. It was a minor moth incident, but at the time, my sweaters were in the freezer. Little damage was reported, and I only found evidence of one one damaged sweater. But precautions were taken, right? If you're a maker and you work with natural fibers and you find a moth in your sweater drawer, you take precautions. So at the time, back to the story of the sweater, I had most of my sweaters in the freezer because one of the ways to make sure your any eggs are killed is to put them in the freezer for 40, 48 hours, 72 hours, 72 hours. And, um, at a deep freeze temperature so that the eggs are killed. So anyway, that's where they were. I was cold, he was gone, his sweater was available, so I wore his sweater. Now, it was way too big for me. I mean, my husband's not a large man, but he obviously is bigger than I am. And, uh, but I was like, oh, I kinda like this oversized sweater. And I like that his neckline, he didn't want this high neckline, even though I used the same pattern. His is just a simple crew neck neckline. I think I made like four rows, I think, four rows of the um, knitting of the rib at the top. So I decided after wearing it for a large chunk of the two weeks he was gone and when he came back I couldn't really wear it anymore because that would be very nice. So I cast on my own. So I have cast on a new Louisiana sweater that I'm going to make like his but I'm going to make it one sizer than one sizer, one size bigger than the one I'm wearing so that it's a little more uh, boyfriend sweater, oversized sweater kind of feel to it. So I'm excited about that. I haven't worked on it a lot recently as my other sweaters have come out of the freezer and I've been able to wear them again. But what I ended up doing is I actually tried a couple different yarns and I don't know if any of you, I'm sure you're like this, this happens to everyone. Sometimes you just the pattern and the the yarn just doesn't mix whether it's the weight of the yarn or the color of the yarn i had this uh beautiful wool of the andes tweed yarn that i had bought and it's pink i think it's called square dance or something and when i got it i thought oh this is great but it, when i got it in the mail it was a little bit brighter than i had thought it was going to be and even, and so now a little time has passed and I'm like, oh, do I really want a sweater out of that? Will I wear a sweater out of that? And the answer was no. So I ripped that one out and I cast this on. And what I'm doing is I'm marling two colors. So these are leftovers from a blankets I made for my kids a while ago. 
This is still Wool of the Andes, but it is super wash. And I'm holding the Fjord Heather and the Marble Heather together. So it is very similar in color to this one, but you know what? I don't really care. It's going to be a little bit different. And I'm kind of, I'm that kind of person who, I feel like there's too many decisions I make during my day every day. I'd much rather have like five of the same thing, but in slightly different colors. It makes my life so much easier. So <clears throat> that is what I'm doing. And I just finished my collar. I think I decided to make my collar slightly big, slightly longer than my husband's. Um, so I'm just getting into the raglan increases. So not very far on that, but hopefully I will get some work done on that before I come to you next. That is a really fast knit because you knit it on size. Well, I think the pattern is for size 13, but because I'm a loose knitter, I go down to an 11. So it goes very quickly when you're knitting in the round. The other, the next uh, new cast on I have, I did not get very far in. This is a pair of socks for my husband. I had to actually, it's that time of the year where I have to be on like Zoom calls and things for trainings for the farmer's market or whatever. So I had to do a, um, what do they call it? A fruit, fruit and vegetable nutrition program training thing that the Minnesota Department of Agriculture does. And so it was extremely boring and not very informational, but I attended so that they could put a check next to my name. But in the meantime, I cast on a pair of socks. So what I'm doing is <clears throat> these are knit on a size zero. I use double points. My, my double points of choice are the, I think these are called Sunstruck. They're from Sunstruck, yep, they're from Knit Picks. Here's the package. Um, and I had this, this is a skein of yarn that I dyed oh so many years ago. It is actually dyed with turmeric and over dyed with indigo. And the reason I kept it is because I washed it and washed it and washed it. And I had, I was experimenting and I put way too much turmeric in. And I couldn't get it to stop um, bleeding the yellow. So I figure I don't really care. I'll just wash it by itself for me personally, but I don't like to sell yarns that um, have a lot of excess dye in like that because if you're using them in a color work project, it can be stressful. And I, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't fade into the other color. It should just go into the water, but depending on what you're making and how long you let it sit and how warm the water is, it can happen. And I don't want to cause stress to anybody. So I kept it, but it's a really fun kind of swampy green color. So I cast on the cuff. I'm just doing a knit two purl two cuff. And then this is a Woolens and Nosh, beautiful skein of yarn in the, let's see if I have the color. This is her Targi Sock yarn base, and it is, this is the way, and it's 90% Targi, 10% nylon, 411 yards. So I don't know, you know, I, can't, I had this set aside to make the cuff, and I thought I was going to do the heels and the toe too, but I think I might just do the cuff and a little bit of the toe because this yarn is much thinner than this yarn. And this is, I think, a 75, 25, 463 yards to 100 grams, whereas this one is only 411. So for one, it's a lot thinner, but also my husband's kind of hard on his socks sometimes. So I think he'd be more likely to wear through the thin versus the thick. So I think I am going to just use this for most of the, of the sock. So my plan is that I am going to actually do a ribbed sock for him. So I did cast on, you know, the ribbing on the top in a contrast color. But I think I'm planning on doing a ribbed sock for the majority of, I think I'm going to do it for the whole leg and the top of the foot. And I may even experiment and do some ribbing in the heel flap. So we'll see if that goes well. I think it was Kay from Grocery. From, uh, from the bakery bears who I saw do that. And I thought, oh, that 
that's kind of interesting. I kind of like how that looks. So I might give that a go. But I just cast those on just this past Sunday, so like two days ago. So I have not gotten very far on those. I will probably work on those again, probably while I'm editing this video, to be honest. Because I do have, last time I came to you, I showed you my um, son's heel toe do -si -do socks. And I did almost finish the first sock. I don't think it's enough that I pulled it out to show you because I have not worked on it that much um, since I came to you last. But I don't know. I just haven't been feeling that. I, I'm not as excited about the yarn. And isn't that something to say if you're not excited about the yarn, you just don't pick up the project? I find that to be true. I don't know about any of you, but, but I'm not excited about the yarn. Uh, I only get so far in the project and then I find, you know, find myself kind of forgetting about it, forgetting about it, if you know what I mean. Casting on something new and shiny, as one does. And the last thing, speaking of new cast-ons, that I want to show you is a new pattern design I am working on. And I don't know what these are going to be called yet, but these are fingerless mittens. This is the first version I made. And it is, these are going to be a kit um, or a pattern that will be used with 250 gram mini skeins of contrasting colors. So you might, if you've been around with me for a long time here, um, I've been doing, I've been dyeing yarn for seven years. Actually, March is my anniversary, seven years. Um, and I've been doing this podcast for almost four, I think. Um, so if you've been around a while, you may know that I really haven't, I have never really started designing until last year. This is the first, you know, thing. But the reason being is that I have done kits before with other designers and that's lovely and I've worked with some wonderful people ladies mostly and we've put together kits and things but now that I have been knitting more a lot of things so step back let me tell you the full story here so I have mentioned that I set up at the farmer's market and a lot of the people I see at the farmer's market are un they love the yarn they're not sure what to make with it and they love it when I put together kits and patterns and things like that. It's just, you know, I guess it just kind of depends. Every, every knitter, crocheter is different. Some people really like kits and some don't. Me personally, I am not drawn to kits, which is why I never took a lot of time to put together kits. I prefer to create my own colors and do that sort of thing. But a lot of people really like kits. So um, I decided this year that I really was going to try to create a line of things during the off season that my farmer's market customers and hopefully lots of other customers too would appreciate and enjoy. And that would be kits that I designed. Simple patterns that um, are beautiful and not too difficult, but are fun to make and are a great way to use some of the yarns and the things that I create. So because I have, I have quite a few dyed right now, that are waiting to be labeled to go in the shop. Uh, 50 gram sets of two different colors and I have been selling them. There is some online right now. Um, I thought, well, let's do some fingerless mitts. So these mitts are two colors, the cuff, but they're held, it's fingering weight held double. So it's more of a DK weight. I have not tested it yet with DK weight yarn, but I am going to, and I do assume it will work just fine. You could do a single strand of DK weight. Um, but so there's a cuff. I don't love this cuff right now. Um, I started originally with a twisted knit one purl one cuff, but I don't really like how it goes into my pattern up here. So I have cast on a new one, which is actually a purl one knit one which will hopefully be nicer to go into the pattern up above. So it is a pattern where you use the um, one color for four rows and then you do the next color for two rows. So there isn't a lot of management as far as um, holding the yarn. So if you've never done a two color project before, this is gonna be a really great one for that because it's going to be simple enough that you don't have to worry about like cutting the yarn and weaving in the ends. You can just carry it up as you go. So yeah, so that's the first one. I am, like I said, working on the second one right now. And these actually knit up very quickly if I spend time on them. 
because they are DK weight and they are fingerless mittens. So I'm hoping, you know, in the not so distant future, I will get these knit up and have a few testers. I'm hoping to have them in a couple sizes um, and to be ready in May sometime. And I know that sounds like a weird time of year to make fingerless mittens and to put out fingerless mitten patterns. And maybe as I get better at this, the patterns will come out at a different time of the year. But for me and the way that I work with the farmer's market, it's this time of year where I really like to have those kits ready for my customers. So yeah, don't know what those are going to be called, but the, the no-name fingerless mittens, that makes me think of that no-name steak company or something. Um, I do not eat steak, but it's kind of a funny, funny name for a company. So that is it, I believe. If you um, have any questions about any of the things that I just shared with you, a lot of information will be found in the box below. So be sure to check that out first. And if it still isn't your question isn't answered, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you with an answer as soon as I can. But as always, thank you so very much for spending your time with me and for sharing this craft with me. I love to make things crochet, knitting, and I love to talk about them. And I always feel very inspired to get back to my projects after I record a video. So, so thank you for listening and watching and for being a part of this community. So I'll talk to you soon, everybody. Take care and happy making. Bye-bye.